Hello, Medicare adventurers! Welcome! Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Chris Tucker, your Medicare guide, and today we are going to talk about Part C. Now, I've received a couple of questions regarding what is Part C, and Part C is also known as Medicare Advantage. Now, let's go into the details of the different characteristics of this special part of Medicare. Uh, part C has been around uh, since about the turn of the century, and Part C was brought about to be able to provide extra benefits to those Medicare beneficiaries who are looking for not quite the flexibility of a supplement plan or able to afford the monthly premium of a supplement plan, but still wanted to be able to cover the gaps associated with Medicare. Let's go over some of the uh, parts to be aware of when looking at a Part C plan now. So Part C has characteristics such as deductibles. They have max out-of-pocket cost. Many Part C plans have the prescription drug associate, uh, the prescription drug plan associated with the plan as well. So in many cases, a Part C plan that you enroll into will also cover the Part D requirement for you to be able to make sure you have credible coverage for your prescription drugs. Now, Part C has to at least cover what Medicare covers. There are some misconceptions that some Part C plans do not cover what Medicare does, but by law, they do have to at least cover that on a yearly basis. These plans have to be able to submit their coverage and their benefits to be approved by CMS or the Medicare governing body uh, over these private carriers. Okay, Many Part C plans do not have a monthly premium with them. Uh, there, is a, there is no cost on a monthly basis associated with these plans in general. Now, what types of Part C plans are out there? There are PPO plans. There are uh, HMO plans, uh, which in many cases, HMO plans, especially in the past, have had a very bad uh, reputation per se. Uh, but many HMO plans, especially in metropolitan areas, such as the area I am in here in Phoenix, uh, they have many, many providers, and there are many, many choices that an individual who is enrolled on that plan is able to take advantage of. Now, when you are looking at enrolling in a Medicare Advantage plan, uh, when, when it comes to providers, you do want to check with your provider or have your agent check the provider directory for that plan to be able to make sure that your doctors and your specialists and others are covered under that plan. So we have HMO, we have PPO, uh, which gives you flexibility to be able to see in-network as well as out-of-network providers. But be mindful with a, P with a PPO plan, seeing an out-of-network provider could incur additional costs and increased cost sharing. Also, uh, you have PFFS, plans, uh, which are like a supplement plan, uh, other than that when you have a PFFS plan, uh, you would need to show your card to your doctor's office or specialist office, and they have a choice of whether or not they want to accept the terms and conditions of that plan. As long as they accept it, then you are good to be able to use that plan with them for that visit. Keep in mind, every time you visit, that doctor has the flexibility to decide whether or not they want to take that plan at any given time. Uh, also, uh, not as common, there are medical savings account advantage plans. They work just like a medical savings account uh, for those who are under 65, uh, where you have a high deductible, uh, but uh, you're enabled to take advantage or able to have tax advantages 
associated with your medical costs. So those are the four different types of Medicare Advantage plan. You have your HMO, your PPO, your PFFS, and your medical savings account. Okay. Now, uh, let's go into some of the advantages of a Medicare Advantage plan. Uh, one of the key advantages is the extra benefits associated with the plan. Uh, you have the opportunity with many plans to be able to have vision, dental, hearing, over-the-counter benefit, which an over-the-counter benefit is when you're able to go to a place like Walgreens, CVS, Walmart, or it could be mail order, and be able to order day-to-day uh, -day personal care items. This could include adult, uh, a, a, adult diapers, uh, cotton swabs, uh, cotton balls, uh, things like that to be able to help take care of yourself. Uh, sometimes you receive a benefit on a monthly basis and sometimes you receive it on a quarterly basis. Be mindful with the over-the-counter benefits that you want to know if your monthly or quarterly allowance rolls to the next month or the next quarter, and at what point does it stop rolling? Uh, let's see, what are some other benefits there? Uh, another thing that we've also briefly touched on, but I do wanna make sure that you're aware of it, having your prescription drug coverage as part of this plan can be a great benefit for you, because then you don't have an additional premium for purchasing a Part D plan. Now, keep in mind, with a PPO, and an HMO, you cannot purchase a standalone Part D prescription drug plan with those types of Medicare Advantage plans. Again, I'll say one more time, just to make sure it was clear. You cannot purchase a standalone Part D prescription drug plan if you are enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan that is an HMO or a PPO. You can, however, enroll in a standalone prescription drug plan if you are enrolled in a medical savings account advantage plan or in a PFFS advantage plan. Those two, you would be able to enroll in a standalone Part D prescription drug plan. So let's see, other advantages. Uh, not only are you able to get additional benefits above and beyond what Medicare would cover, uh, as well as potentially having a Part D prescription drug. Uh, but for many of these plans, uh, a, and, and you would want to check your summary of benefits, uh, and I'm, again, basing my perspective off of the uh, area here in the Phoenix area that I'm in. Many of these plans have not only emergency coverage nationwide, which means if you are in an emergency, uh, somewhere outside of your service area, emergencies would be covered as if you were in network. Not only is nationwide coverage usually offered, but also it is becoming more and more of a trend that worldwide coverage is also provided as well. Many times there is a limit to how much they will cover you worldwide. And so do be mindful of those limits and be sure to ask that question. So is a Part C a good plan for you? That will all depend. If many of these features sound good and you are someone who maybe does not travel very much and you do not need a lot of flexibility with what doctors you see, uh, you have a general consistency uh, to when you see your specialists and doctors and such, uh, then um, a Part C plan could be a really good option for you. The other thing to consider is as you're looking at your monthly supplement uh, plan, as far as how much it costs you, and we'll talk about supplements more this next Tuesday, uh, as you look at that monthly premium, is it more than what the maximum out-of-pocket cost would be for a Medicare Advantage plan? Let's talk about maximum out-of-pocket just briefly. So maximum out-of-pocket cost is associated with all of the medical costs that are covered under the plan. So if you have a copay, that goes toward your max 
calendar year out-of-pocket cost. If you have any cost sharing or deductible associated with the medical portion of your plan, then that would go toward your max out-of-pocket cost. Okay. Now, one part of a of the Part C plan that is not included in your max out-of-pocket cost is the prescription drug coverage. Prescription drug is still considered a separate benefit of the Part C. And so please be mindful as you look at max out-of-pocket costs, you cannot include your prescription drug costs in that. We'll talk more about Part D on Thursday when we go over like the donut hole, things like that in more detail, but not right now. So with max out-of-pocket cost, if you if a Medicare Advantage plan, say, has a $3,200 calendar year max out-of-pocket cost, and you're paying $300 a month for your supplement plan, then it may save you money in the long run to be able, it will save you money and not say may, but it will save you money in the long run to change to a Medicare Advantage plan because your max out-of-pocket cost over the course of a calendar year is less than the, than the yearly premium for your supplement plan. And so that would be a point to explore. Again, if you do a lot of traveling and you need to see doctors in multiple states or specialists in multiple states and you need that flexibility, a supplement plan will still be probably the best thing for you. Uh, but being able to gauge when financially, it would be ideal to change from one thing to another and making sure that you're in a, uh, that, that you know what you're giving up and what you're also taking on is very important as you make that. And that's something that I do with all of my Medicare adventures uh, is helping to be able to figure out at what point is that fork in the road of staying on the supplement and going on to the Advantage plan going to be appropriate. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that this has been helpful in shedding some light on the convoluted and sometimes sticky messes of Medicare. As we continue on this journey, I hope that you will like, share, subscribe, uh, comment, let me know what you think about these videos and how they are helping you on your journey. Or maybe there's some questions that have come up that you would like to be able to ask me. Please be sure to do so and I will respond just as quickly as I can. At any point, if you would like to talk with me personally about your Medicare journey uh, and be and allow me to be your guide, uh, my phone number is 480-712-7836. Again, that is 480-712-7836. And I would be honored to be your guide and to be able to help you in your Medicare adventure. Take care.